if you want to stand out and get a date, you want girls to like you, you have to look as attractive as possible. And 80% of relationships are being formed online now. Not about just going out to a nightclub wearing a suit and tie and trying to talk to random girls. You have to have high profile social media so that girls will notice you. Otherwise, you're not going to get laid. Now we can just basically race over this. So we'll start with a five brush. And basically, we're going to just paint over the top of the white. Don't worry, it's not going to be this bright. I'm not willing to sacrifice that detail. Like, I paid a lot of money for this expensive fucking sweater. So I'm going to go ahead and back it up. Only half of that. Let's see what happens if we take out some of uh, the yellow on this. Ooh. Now, now we are blinging. That is what the sweater should look like. All right, fellas. So uh, I'm going to show you how easy it is to aesthetically upgrade your pictures. Got a nice selfie right here. So here you can see uh, this is the full original one right here. Uh, you can see that I don't really even iron the background anymore because I'm going to make the background disappear by cutting it out. My head is slightly tilted, which makes my eyes look uh, not level. Essentially, what I've done is I took it from this position into, now I made it more straight, lining it up like this with the guides so that um, when we zoom all the way in, you can clearly see that my eyes are exactly level. Guide right here. You can see under the catch light. Um, it's nice and level, and there we go. So now what we're going to do is basically delete the background. There are tools that you can use to basically just delete the background in one click. You can do that. But it comes out, oh, just not as professional as I would like it. I want to make this like, you know, magazine quality. After I do that, you'll notice that some of my hair um, is in like, if it just cut out the hair, for example, it would look kind of funky. We're actually going to do that. But what we're going to do is we're going to use the eyedropper tool here. We're going to take a sample of the hair, which is kind of this like off-white color, and we're going to basically make a new layer, and then basically you're going to like redraw the hair like that. I'm going to redraw it. We'll get the exact colors. You can put like this, like over here. We'll put one here, and um, we'll match the exact colors to the hair, like right here. And then we'll go back and we'll just take the eraser tool after like I redraw this big hair right here. Then when you delete the gray over the top of it, you won't delete the layer on top of it with the new hair. But anyway, I'm going to do that now. And um, after I'm all completely traced out here, we'll come back to this little vlog. I like to put the eraser tool at about 10. Seems to work really well. Sometimes 20 and sometimes I'll drink it down to like 5. And then you just want to trace along here. You'll notice there's a little bit of a shadow, and we're going to go back and fix that in a second. Because at the end, we're going to add an artificial shadow, which will look better than the natural. I like to drink a couple of beers, and I like to put on some relaxing music while I do this. Now we're going to go down to a five, and basically that's going to let me to just get in real close. And you always just want to take it nice and slow. Take your time. This is professional. You never know. That picture could go viral. Millions of people could see this. So you always want to take your time, be professional. And like I said, the goal here is to make yourself look as attractive as possible. So that you'll be able to get girls, especially when this goes on to my Tinder 
to my Bumble, to my Hinge, Plenty of Fish, OkCupid, you know, any kind of dating site, Instagram, TikTok. Women are going to see your picture and women have endless options. So they're only going to choose the best. That's why if you want to stand out and get a date, you want girls to like you, you have to look as attractive as possible. And 80% of relationships are being formed online now. So it's not about just going out to a nightclub wearing a suit and tie and trying to talk to random girls. You have to have high profile social media so that girls will notice you. Otherwise, uh, you're not going to get laid. And girls look at every single detail because they've got thousands and thousands of guys that are hitting them up and they're only going to choose uh, the best looking guys, the tallest guys, the guys that make the most money, the guys that are the most successful. And if you want to compete against these uh, these Chads and Tyrones that are naturally good looking, that are naturally tall, six foot two, six foot four, you know, if you're a guy who's uh, only five foot six or you know, five foot eight or whatever and with average looks and um, you have shitty pictures, some selfie you took on your iPhone or Android, and um, it's got a, you know, shitty lighting, shitty background. Girls are just going to swipe left on you. That's why your pictures have to be uh, top-notch professional and uh, with the best lighting. You want to fix all the aesthetic upgrades. You want to make sure that you don't have any zits or any blemishes. Girls look at all that stuff, and if you're not up to par, they'll just uh, swipe left on you, and they'll choose some better-looking guy. Don't get, you know, service that I offer, you know, it's where you send $100 and I do this stuff to your pictures and make them um, into professional portrait style pictures, then, you know, you're not going to get laid. So, that's the way it is in, in 2022, you have to, uh, you have to get your pictures, uh, you have to get a digital retouch for your pictures or you're not going to get laid. This way, all this stuff, you're going you're gonna to just see the magic happen. See how there's a zit right here? See, I have a small mole right here. Looks like I kind of have like a, like a zit right here, dark spot under the eye. Like I haven't, like I didn't sleep that well. My eyes are not very, um, naturally people's eyes don't, just they don't photograph that bright. So we're going to do eye work. We're going to take all this white in my eyes and make it brighter. Um, I got a my earring you can see the hole in my ear we're gonna patch that uh, I got a slight little scar right here on my chin we're gonna get rid of that and um, I think I even have look there's a hair right here we're gonna make that disappear we're going to um, sharpen up the image we're gonna use a denoise filter and uh, just turn this picture where I look like an average dude into looking like a model the thing about these pictures is it doesn't guarantee that you're gonna get laid Still, women are, may look at it and just be like, oh, no, it just doesn't make the cut. But at least it might give a chance to get that second look. Maybe the girl will look and then look again and rejudge it and go, oh, all right, he looks all right. Like, I'll, I'll swipe right on his picture and, you know, maybe I'll, I'll go hang out with him. And at that point, that's when you're in the game because then you have a chance to meet the girl in real life and demonstrate some personality and some game and some confidence and share with her some stories about your life and what you can offer. And that might just turn the table to where the point where she'll let you have sex. For example, you know, when a girl talks to me on Tinder, she doesn't know anything about me. She doesn't know that I'm the best soaper in the world. She doesn't know that I've been on the covers of magazines. She doesn't know I'm a best selling author. She, she doesn't know anything about me. She doesn't know anything about that portion of my game. And the idea is that looks are going to get you in the door. Okay. So if, you look good enough, she might swipe right and be like, all right, we'll see what this guy's all about. And that's where the game comes in. That's where, for example, in my personal life, I'm going to show her the picture of me on the cover of a magazine. I'm going to tell her I make YouTube videos. I'm going to show her the thumbnail where I have uh, almost 8 million views on this uh, H3 video. And that's where she's going to go, oh, wow, like this guy isn't just some average Joe motherfucker. Like, this guy is a superstar. And that's where she's going to maybe start thinking, oh, okay, like if I date this guy, look at the lifestyle. He can, he's can. he got a brand new Mercedes Benz. He's got his own place. He's an entrepreneur. He's got his own business. Like, wow, this is, the, you know, if I date this guy, there's, you know, he brings something to the table. So if you don't naturally have 
you know, good looks, if you're not naturally this six foot four, you know, good looking Chad, you can develop game and then just work on uh, getting the, the best pictures that you can that are going to make the girl swipe, uh, swipe right on you instead of swiping left. And that might give you a chance to get a date. And then that date can turn into a, a lay. And, you know, once you get laid, the girl likes the sex and she likes what you have to bring to the table. You might just get yourself a girlfriend. That's what you're looking for. I don't like that straight hair, so we're just gonna get rid of that. But I do really like the way this hair flips over like this, but we're gonna take a sample, the eyedropper tool of that color of hair. You can see how it's right here, and it's, it's dark now. And basically, we're just gonna take a brush. I think a two will work. And we're just gonna basically trace over the top of that hair, all right? Nice little arc. We're going to do another one right here. We're going to do another one right here. We're going to do another one right here. That again. Good. I'm not sure I might. Um, no, we're not going to use that one. Um, I think. Uh, you might want to do some here, like this. Like that. You might want to do one right here. You might want to now change up the eyedropper tool so we have more of this, this white going on. It's a lighter color. Right? Because it's like a, a reflection from the light. So that. Like that. Doesn't have to be perfect at first. We can fix that after the fact. Here we've got one right here. Color. In fact, that's almost transparent. So if you want, you could even do each one of these hairs on a different layer, depending on how intricate you want to get into it. Pretty good. That one we're going to get rid of. Side hairs. I don't need any of these. That one we're going to get rid of. Like I said, now we can just basically race over this. Give myself a little haircut right here, you know, trim up those sideburns. It's tough, guys. This is what it's come to. If you want to date in 2022, you have to do stuff like this now. That's why they say it's, it's over for most men. Look at this. It's absolutely ridiculous. Do this in 2010 to get a date. Right. Something else you can do, if you notice how it's got kind of a hard edge, you can actually go onto this and then we use the smudge tool right here. A5, and that will just basically take off some of the hard edging. You just Tool, if you want. Okay. Next, what we're going to do, we're going to go on the main layer and we're going to put a stroke right here. And you can see these are pieces of where I was trying to delete, but um, it missed a couple of spots. So, what we're going to do is we're going to put that in red because that will good contrast to the green background. And then we're going to go back and we're going to delete all those little pieces because if we try to shadow it right now, shadowing off of the broken piece. And we want it to shadow off of the direct image. We're also going to marry those extra little hair pieces to the main image. So it, the stroke will eventually come around here. But we don't need to do that yet. Right now we just want to delete all of those little hair pieces. So we've got to set a one and it's in red. Now we're going to go back and basically delete all those extra little pins. All right, here we go. Now we got rid of all that extra bullshit. Look at that. Boom. So this is phase one right here. At this point, this is where I'm going to take a break, uh, probably refill my coffee, and then we're going to uh, come back and um, basically start changing the lighting, changing the exposure. We're going to saturate it. 
We're going to denoise it. After that, we're going to use like what's called a global effect called Color Lookup, which is a filtering system in Photoshop to basically change the lighting and just basically blend everything together and make it look like one solid portrait and um, change the shadowing, anything we want to do. Because the foreground versus the background, we want to make sure that it has the right separation and uh, do all that photo magic. And uh, so I'm going to get a drink. I'll be right back. All right, so we're back at uh, this point right here and uh, how to protein shake. And now we're going to basically show you how to apply the aesthetic upgrades right here. The first thing that I wanna do is change the exposure on this picture. So exposure right here is basically gonna add artificial light that wasn't necessarily there in the picture, right? So the hotter you get it, all the way up to white, and the less exposure takes away light. And gamma correction is by going this way, you add overall more light and then subtract light. In order to measure the exposure, so we wanna get it as hot as we can without basically um, turning it white and using like destructive editing. You can see like this is way too hot right here at 130. So we know that it's not going to be past this. So basically what you do is you take the exposure up till you start seeing it like see we've completely obliterated my sweater. That we've completely lost detail now. Even just going up one point, we already even at 80 it's too hot. So what you do basically you just run the dial so you start, boom, look at that. Even at 50, it's too hot. So you run it till you start seeing it's too hot, and then you back it up. So let's start at 50, and then basically we just use the down arrow. Start backing it up. Now I see the I see the detail in my sweater again at about 36. I'm still going to back it up because it's too hot. Now we're at about 18 or 20. Probably get away with 18, but it still is too hot to me. And I might want to punch it up a little bit after the fact. So at 10, it's almost too hot. Which is good because that means that my the original part, when I, when I put the lighting in at the beginning, was on point. It means I lit the picture correctly. So five, we'll do five. And we'll just see if we can punch it up with one here. Uh, even with that, I'm not even going to do that. Look at the preview. Seems a little brighter in the face. And it's almost even unnecessary. So we'll go with four. Point four. Okay. The next thing that we want to do is we want to go to selective color. And you can see that I have way too much red in my face. So if we add cyan, it takes out the red. If we subtract the cyan, it will make my face more red. So generally you want to take, at least with my skin tone, at least add 15 and sometimes even 25. I think it'll be too much. If you use too much, you start looking like fucking dead and pale. So again... Don't want to be red. You, it makes you look more youthful and healthy skin. I'm thinking about eight. Actually, you just tone down the red a little bit. Even that's maybe even too much. So we'll always just back it off. It's okay. Mixing photos is very much like mixing music, but um, it's mixing photos. I'm actually going to only add five. Okay, so first red and then black. Okay. Usually you'd be able to one, one, punch one or two up. So add just a little bit of contrast. We back it up, you can see that basically we lost contrast in my, contrast in my hair. So there's at zero. If we add one, it makes my hair a little darker. Two is almost too much. Going to do plus one. So adding the black and the the added uh, cyan, which is blue, light blue, you can see that my hair becomes more attractive. And the skin tone looks a little better. Correct? Very nice. So start with that. Okay. Now, the next thing that we're going to do.
can also punch here with shadows and highlights. Back. We pop this up by one. It's actually not necessarily. And uh, that one we could open. I don't need that. Okay. <laughs> all right. So the next thing we do before we start getting all crazy with it is basically we want to aesthetically upgrade my skin. We want to get rid of the hair. This is ridiculous. So we're going to, the tool that we're going to be using right here is called the Band-Aid tool. What the Band-Aid tool does is whatever area you click on, for example, you can see that I have a kind of a, a small scar right here. Now you could never see this. If you were talking to me standing three feet away, you wouldn't be able to see this, but it's going to show up on the camera. But just to show you an idea of what this tool does, um, my favorite tool, the Band-Aid tool. So what it does is the area that you select on is basically going to take whatever is around that area and flip it in reverse. Okay. So it basically makes your imperfections appear. I have a mole. I have this mole right here by my eye. See? On. How about this one up here? On. 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 Right here, this mole right here. On. On. And so now we're going to shrink it. You want to get this as small as you can. Like if you've got the patience, use it as a, a brush size, like three or four. Uh, we'll go four for here. And of course, then we're going to have to zoom in. Because again, it's just a stray hair. You would never see this in real life, but on the picture, it's going to show up. And you want to get rid of that because it's distracting. So there. The loose hair is now gone. Wrinkles, make them disappear. Go weird coloration spot. And then boom, that hair is gone. Okay, hair is gone. Uh, there's some slight remnants of it here. Let's go back over the hair. Doing this at home, you can take all the time that you want, just make it perfect. Put on some music, you know, get a get a beer, get a glass of wine, whatever you want to do, and just make a night out of aesthetically upgrading your pictures for your gender. Otherwise, you're not gonna get a date. You have to do this now if you want to compete with all these Chads and Tyrones. Looks good there. We're gonna upgrade this brush to a six. I generally like to work with with the brush type for the face when I'm doing this. Okay. And okay, okay. And uh, now we're just gonna do this. It's gonna take a few minutes to get rid of all of these spots. I just had a little sleep in my eye. <laughs> all right. It just it just happens. That's I mean that's just life. Oh, let me show you an, an example. If you do this too much, like like in this area right here, where there's too much white and too much dark, if you try to do it, see, it made it less attractive. So sometimes it just, it's not going to work. You have to take it back. So try it everywhere that you can. And if it starts getting like weird dark spots or something like that, if you can't fix it, don't worry about it. Again, no one's really going to notice one individual spot that you fix. It's more just if you fix up the whole face, you'll just overly look more attractive. I have a little spot on my nose or on my head. Get rid of all those little blackheads in my nose. And I can get rid of it right now if I pinch it, but I didn't do it the day of the photo shoot. And now there's like a blackhead right there. So we don't want to show that to girls because that's unattractive. It'll turn a girl off. Had some nose hair or something like that in the picture. Um, now, with the lips, there's nothing actually there on my lips, but it's just the way that the glare hits right here. So, we want to get rid of that stuff. And um, actually, right here, what we want to do is use that smudge tool again. So, that will basically 
take this down to like a size three on the brush. And um, basically we're gonna take this darker spot and it just, lighter spot. There's nothing there, like I said, it's just a glare. I mean, it could be spit, but um, most likely it's, it's nothing. It's just the way that the picture came up. But um, just by doing that with the sponge tool, now look at my lips. Here it's bugging me. The darker part, smudge over the lighter part. Go. You know, my lips are more attractive. I look more kissable. The whole point of fixing your lips. So I think about kissing you. All right. You have attractive lips. Before you do a photo, you should always brush your lips with a toothbrush. It adds a little more red to them, or you can add like, lip gloss if you like. Band-aid tool doesn't work. Go back to the smudge tool. Good. There, maybe this one light spot. spot right there. Looking good. Looking really good. All right. Fix up, uh, get these, the, the most major spots. Down. This little mole right here. Necessary. Okay. This is where I shaved. Again, you can't see this. I mean, these are pores. Everybody has pores in their skin. And men grow beards. I shaved right before this picture, but when you're fucking zooming in like a thousand percent, you're gonna see these little pores. And um, so don't like let it drive you too crazy because you know everybody has pores. Women have the luxury of using airbrushing to make it look like they don't have pores, which is why you guys shouldn't trust these girls' Instagram photos because they're really not that pretty as they portray themselves to be. Um, because they're using airbrushing and they're using foundation and concealer. It looks more normal on a woman. If a man uses makeup, it feminizes him a little bit just for the masculinity. So, like I said, you don't have to do every single spot. Like I said, people have pores. You know, you, you can, take out all the pores on your face. And if you do it, it won't look so masculine anyway, but you want to find the areas that are like, where there's just something really popping out. Just like here, here. Maybe you um, had a scratch on your face or you popped a zit earlier and your, that part of your face was like really red. Uh, you know, that's why I love this tool. Okay. Um, look at my nose. They, there's really nothing there in my nose. That's just it's just skin. Um, but for some reason, it, it, it looks a little funky. So I'm gonna go ahead and trace over that with the smudge tool. Blur tool a little bit. Okay, you can see right here, there's a bunch of spots. Here's a spot here. You want to get rid of all that weird, unnatural redness right there. That's not even really part of my skin. This could be a weird lighting reflection or something from the room. That. Right I want to put myself in the best possible light. And I'm presenting myself on social media in front of these girls. I want them to look at you and go, wow, that guy's attractive. I could see myself dating him. I could see him as my boyfriend. I could see introducing him to uh, my family. So if you have a shit ton of zits, look like fucking you got a bunch of acne and shit. Girls are just going to be like, oh, 
don't give a fuck. We'll find some other guy who's taller and better looking. Man. It ain't easy, fellas. Game is not easy. But with tips and tactics like this that I'm teaching you guys, it's going to help to improve your dating life. And you will be able to get laid, get a girlfriend, um, find your dream girl. Now, you guys have to remember how close we are zoomed in. Right now, this picture is like several thousand pixels by several thousand pixels. Instagram, even when you upload this picture in high definition, it's still gonna crush it to 1080 by 1080. So you're gonna lose massive amounts of detail when you upload to Instagram or Tinder or any of those things. So, and also this is so zoomed in, like this is mass, we're massively zoomed in right now. Um, after we zoom out, you can't tell. It just looks like smooth skin. I look very, I look more youthful, uh, just overall, just more attractive. What is this? Dent. I clearly don't have a dent, a random dent in my forehead. I'm feeling that. Now I just want to make sure that there's no, like, lint or anything on my shirt. Okay. Sometimes there's, like, lint or there's, like, a, you know, like, this is, what is this? Get rid of that imperfection. Maybe you forgot to iron your shirt. You can use that tool and make it look like you ironed your shirt. It will take out wrinkles. Okay. It looks fine. Now, I can see one little dark spot under my eye right here. I have no idea what that is. Maybe I didn't get enough sleep the night before. Go ahead and fill in that. Wrinkle right there that. I don't want to erase too much because then it won't even look like me. But, um, dark spot is gone. You want to keep some lines in your face. Like, see how I have this line right here? That's just a natural line. If I got rid of those, for example, then now it makes my face look flat. So it's like, you have to these lines here, here, the ones here, you should definitely try to keep if you can. Little ones like this, if you use too much, you know, it'll make your face look flat. If you take out too many wrinkles, you know, I am 40, I'm going to be 42 years old next month. I can't make myself look, you know, 20 in the picture or it's just going to be a complete uh, facade. We don't want to like completely change the way that we look, but we want to present ourselves in the best possible light. All right, we're looking, uh, it's looking, it's looking good here. All right. So the next thing we want to do is brighten up these eyes. We're going to do a little bit of eye work. Okay. So what we could do, swap this over, make sure that we are at 255, 255, 255, all pure white. And um, I'm going to basically show you the trick. It's going to look kind of funky at first. I'll show you how we're going to fix this. So we'll start with a five brush. And basically, we're going to just paint over the top of the white. Don't worry, it's not going to be this bright. We're actually going to take this down to about between 20 to 35 opacity. When we're done. So it'll be transparent. And it's just basically going to overly, it's going to over, overall brighten up the eyes. That. Go back and finish all this. Number five, and then we'll go to a two. Let's get it just a little bit. 
don't cover this part of the eye. Don't go all the way to the corners because it will look unnatural. What we want to do is just brighten up the eyes because it's going to make you look uh, attractive. Make it make you look uh, more healthy. So again, you, you don't need to go in there, and you don't need to cover right next to the eye. If you do that; it'll it'll make your eye look more shady. Just like that. You can even go as far as to replace the entire eye if you want. I've done that in some pictures and all these catch lights. You can maybe I don't want a ring light ring light reflection. Maybe I want um, you know, one solid light here or here. You can actually go and get transparent catch lights and put artificial catch lights on the top of your eyes. You can change the color of your eyes. It depends on the look you're going for. I want this to look as natural as possible. There, here, looking good. That's looking really good. Like I said, it's way too bright. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna drop it down to probably ish. Let's start it. Let's start it. Actually, do a little. Let's start it at twenty-five, and now we're gonna basically start deleting the edges. I gotta pay attention. Let's get this delicate work. If we want to, we can actually soften the eraser. Instead of its 100% hardness, we can go to a 0% hardness and we can just soften the edge of it. I think that'll do it. So now you can clearly see that this is way too bright still, even. Five percent is going to do it. We could go a little hotter. We could probably get six, almost seven percent, but I'm going to keep it at five. It just gives it that extra, just a little bit of pop. And when basically we flatten the image and we brighten the overall white and we do that, that last little pop of exposure that white in the eyes is going to come out 1% or 2% up. If I do it right now, and if I leave it at, let's say, 7, and then I do the overall exposure, I won't be able to do it because the eyes will already be too bright, and it's going to overexpose. So if we leave it right there at about 5, if I was safe, I could even do that for back it up. See the difference? See how it just makes my eyes look a little more healthy? by adding that little bit of white. So we're now going to take the eye and the hair, the main image, and we're going to merge those layers. The next thing that we're going to do, this is this is the magic right here. This is called denoise. Okay. So we're going to reduce noise. And basically this is basically Photoshop's uh, instant airbrushing. So we take it all the way down. What you do uh, you're going to set this to basic, strength of 10, uh, and the rest of these are all zero to start from. And what you're going to be doing is raising this dial to the point. Right now, if you can see it, is at complete zero, which basically absolutely looks you know, ridiculous. It's completely fake. If, you, if I left it like this, leave it at zero, it looks completely blurry. It's nice and smooth, but it's way too much blur. It looks completely you want to start it. So you go reduce noise, it will keep the settings. And basically you're going to start pumping up this dial. Let's start it at 20. Still way too much. And look at the original. You can clearly see I, you, I have to sell my pores and everything. Um, so we want to get rid of some of that, but not too much. So at 50. 50 is probably still uh, not enough. Still looks too smooth and too fake. So let's 
that up a little bit. So undo that. You can redo real quick so you can see 50. It looks good. I mean, you could pass for that, but to me, it's too fake. Undo that. I'm going to filter this. Go back to reduce noise, and let's try 60. It might still be. It might even be need to be 70. If you do too much, it'll feminize you as a man. Girls can get away with a little more denoise, but it's still 70. I want to just make me look a little bit younger, a little bit uh, smoother, a little a little glossy, make me look nice and healthy. I like to just A, B it back and forth. A, B, do back do it again I'm gonna actually go up to 80. it's like right there it could pass as 70 but I still think it's too much I'd rather back it up to just Go with 80. I like that. The next thing we're going to do is sharpen the image. Now, I already shot this at 100 ISO, which ISO which is as low as you can go. And um, now I want to, because I've denoised it, now I want to resharpen it. That takes away some of the sharpening. Now, Photoshop has basically three sharpening modes. You've got sharpen more, which means sharpening it twice. You've got the single sharpen, and then you've got sharpen edges, which is like half sharpen. But if we sharpen more, it's gonna. I already know it's gonna to be too much. Now it's just adding detail. So I undo that. Uh, undo that. Okay. So if we use one single sharpening, that's probably gonna work. I want to filter. I want to sharpen. Just. We are doing uh, really good right here. This is this is this is looking really good, but we still got a lot of a uh, lot of work to do. But um, I'm going to take a quick little break, get a drink, and um, we'll be back at this in a bit. All right, um, so we're back. It's been like um, uh, several hours. It's now four in the morning. Um, I started this project at about seven. I had to go into work. There was a concert over at T-Mobile. Cool concert. Um, got the concert lighting and the audio. I'm not in the same mood as I was earlier. Like I, earlier, I was in the zone when I was editing. But um, I'm try to get back into it. You know, I'm still noticing this weird red dot right here. It's the way that my camera so odd. So what we're gonna do is completely just take this weird. Pink. We're going to just basically select that. Control C, Control V. So, basically the same layer on top of it. But we're going to just take out more of that red on this one. So I'm going to select the color and we can. So, look at the difference right here. You can see that. The redness, boom, now mask. Now when we back up, click off that layer, see, now we've taken out a lot of the redness right there. Whatever that, maybe I scratched my head right before, um, it could have been in between the shots. I might have scratched my head and now you have this weird, just red mark. It's not actually on my face, so that looks a lot better. I'm going to keep that, just marry that to the same image. All right. Oh, and the other thing we were going to do, like I said, we were going to do that um, final exposure, to try to pop it up like one or two little percentage points. So we'll just see. I mean, just those two right there. You can see that it has brightened it more. 
if I go if I go much more than three, I start losing detail. It'll start overexposing the image. So I think we'll go with just point two. Yep. I'm going with point two for my final. And see if we if we did more, pick this up anymore. We lose detail. The eyes start becoming too bright and fake, and it'll, it all looks clunky. A little point for my final exposure. Okay, right there, there's a little bit of like a stray hair on my ear. Make sure that we get rid of that. Band-aid, and then we'll use a little bit of the smudge tool. Change the brush to a, about a five, and we'll just mash that in a little bit. Looking good. Go. I'm gonna hit a really small brush, like at a four, because there's some kind of like little pink dot right there. There we go. Just gonna blend that in. A lot better. It's gonna be maybe a blackhead on my nose. Get rid of that. Some of the spotting is a little too dark. That could have been dust on the lens of my camera. Which means it's not even actually there. It's just like an artifact that we got to get rid of. Good. Now I want to change this white or this black background. Check it out on a white background. It looks a little dark right here. It hurts still. I don't want to go too much right here because I'm going to add a shadow anyway. But I just want to make sure that I get rid of the gray tone before I add more of a black tone for the shadow. Friends of mine be asking, oh man, you should edit some of my pictures, man. How much are you going to pay me? You're going to send me a hundred bucks? People complain, like, oh man, hook me up, bro. Dude, look how time consuming this is. Like, I'm busting my ass to do these. This, this, hard work this is like this is not just you don't just i'm not like a guy on like if you guys want to get these on fiverr or whatever the fuck that site is called uh and pay some dude in like india 15 bucks to change the background like you could do that but it's not going to be professional like this it's going to look like shit uh you're going to like clearly see that uh, it it's very amateur done whereas the way that i do that like this is this this is my this was my job in the United States Navy. Like I'm Photoshop certified by the by the fucking government. This, I did this for years in the uh, when I was in the service. Like, this is the real way that you do this for covers of magazines and things. When I was in the Navy, they sent us to after basic training. They sent us to. Uh, special school in Washington, D.C. to learn how to do this and work on big printing presses and we got certified on all the Adobe products, Photoshop, uh, Illustrator, PageMaker. Um, that was my job in the Navy for like three years working in a print shop doing graphic design. They called it lithography, the repro graphics department. Didn't even really notice it that much on the black background, but as soon as you change it to a white background, it's like it's a whole different story. Check it on the green screen, I'll check it on the blue screen, white, black, a red one. And then once you get like a good mix, then you know you can move on to the next step. 
But look at that. Does not look so much better? Now I'll go back to the black. Look, professional. This looks like a really good portrait right here. And still, we haven't even changed the background yet. Like, we could put flying cars in the background. You could put a jungle in the background. We can, you know, make it look like I'm in a living room in front of a fireplace. So we're gonna we're gonna mess around with that next. I haven't really decided what kind of background I want. And like I said, I once I got called into work, I kind of got taken out of that mode. So um, for the purpose of this video, I might keep it pretty simple. So let's select all of the white. All right, that looks really good. Now we've got all the white selected. So we're gonna copy that, paste. We're gonna basically make this sweater a little whiter. These ones you can test, like auto tone. Ugh, disgusting. Contrast, <laughs> that's interesting. And auto tone. All right, absolutely not. Sometimes those work, but so oh, what we're gonna basically do is go to selective color. We're gonna go to the whites, and first of all, let's see what this is gonna turn out like. Much whiter, but we lose detail. So we might want to try to just back it up just a little bit. I don't want to lose detail. I want to be able to see this design. If you want to, like, you could go ahead and do it. It's still gonna pass. Nobody is gonna notice a difference because if they didn't see the detail in the first place doesn't matter, but I'm not willing to sacrifice that detail. Like I paid a lot of money for this expensive fucking sweater. So I'm going to go ahead and back it up. Only half of that. Is eight. Let's see what happens if we take out some of uh, the yellow on this. Ooh, now, now we are blinging. That is what the sweater should look like. Like this with all the yellow all the way up. It looks older and dingy, right? So. I love it so much, but it starts becoming almost blue if I back it up too much. About 60s. Jump up to 40. Nope, it's still yellow. And let's go all the way to 80. So we can go back, start backing it up. It's somewhere like 60, 70. Or 60. I'm gonna go with 64. Let's see if I can get into it. Okay. Now let's actually go to the white channel or the, to the black channel on that and see if that will pop the edging out a little. No change. Let's try the neutrals. Yes, but it adds. Just too much shadow, and then that takes control away. Uh, so, looks like just a little panel taking out. That's really that's really all there is. So we're taking it back. Sixty four on the yellow and minus eight on the black. Now look at the difference. How yellow that is still. That's how the real sweater is. Now we're blinging. I like that better. Let's look at the before and after. Look at that. This looks like a bright white sweater. And it almost makes, even though this is brand new, it almost makes it look old now. Perfections in the pattern. Again, there's probably nothing there, but the way that I was standing and it stretched the material, all of a sudden it made it look like something something just didn't look off on it. Like right there. Again, nobody's ever gonna notice that, but I'm gonna notice it, and that's just how particular I am about my pictures. It's funny because you do all this work and people look at this on Instagram for like 30 seconds if, if, if they're lucky. Most likely they'll just look and then they'll keep scrolling like a second. And But for me, I'll have this picture for the rest of my life. Let's do 
good. I'm digging it. Oh yeah, um, shadow. So let's add basically a little bit of a shadow in. Hit the shadow. Let's put it at a distance of possibly like four to start, which is too much already. Now as it pops back there, we are gonna use just a different distance of one. If we went too far, which looks cool, but we're not gonna we're not gonna do that. There's another way you can do it too if you have the shadow. You can shadow and you can maybe you want to drag it because it, maybe you have a certain light source and you want it to match. It's like we're doing it at one. And now my spread. I'm actually gonna have it real close. Six, and now I'm gonna drop the opacity, probably like to like in the 30s or to the 50s. One, two, six, and 30. I'm really digging that. See, it's just slightly there. We took the shadow off. Add the shadow back on. Just slightly there. Just makes the image. You start to kind of understand the style. Like, I want it to look as natural as possible. I want it to look like there's not an effect there. In the same way, like when you use reverb uh, on, on a song or delay, you want to use it like a seasoning. Like you add a little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper, you know, a squirt of lemon, um, you know, a dab of A1 sauce, uh, a hint of ranch dressing, just like a like a nice little seasoning. You, you don't want to overpower. You don't want to use like fucking tons of salt and pepper in your cooking because then it's just it, it'll just overpower. Just, just a little bit there and make it look. It shouldn't look like there's an effect. See now now if we drop down to 23 it's it's not enough. If you didn't see me doing all this you would never know that there's a shadow on it. You would never because there's one of those like on every one of my pictures. Nobody's going to notice it. But all the little things you added together now the sweater is brighter, my eyes are brighter, my skin is better. Everything about it is just more physically I, let's try to do this one thing right here. And this is in levels. Increase contents. Too much. Try to take it down by five. Still a little too much. I do like it. But I need to marry this thing first. And before I do that, I'll have to redo the shadow. So I just want to kind of write that down, which is basically one, two, six, and 28. So I'm going to take off the shadow. I'm going to then marry these two. I'm going to merge these layers. I'm going to put the shadow back on. It was 28, 1, 2, and 6. Looking good. And then basically, we want to add this level right here to increase the contrast. Again, we're dropping it down. Try to two. See the difference right there? All of a sudden, it just be, it looks much more real, it's much more like cinematic almost. Next thing I want to do is add a little bit of vibrance. I usually like to hit it at 15, sometimes 5 to punch the saturation, which absolutely doesn't need it here. The vibrance, it just makes it. 
pop out a little bit. There's like a full effect that's way too much, obviously, in this complete out of color. Looks really nice. It's starting to add a little more red back into my face. So we might have to drop that back. But take a look at this now. Let me show you how to do this global effect. So right here, you put uh, create a new fill layer. And you do right here, which is called color lookup. And it's going to basically give you this kind of global effect. And then you just scroll down. And you try to find one that you might like. And then you drop the opacity. All right, so we slightly hinted this and a blue on the so light you can barely even notice. I might even still want to go back and pop out a little bit of the red. Out too much, it starts looking like I have fucking, you know, tired black eyes, and then I would have to carve around these and change the color here to match the skin area. For some reason, maybe I didn't get enough sleep the night before, but this general area right here looks a little just dark to me. So let's put a layer on top and. Let's see what we can do. Look at that. Go back, undo. It looks much more darker right there. For some reason, that dark spot than that. That looks a lot better. And I could probably keep going over and over and over it and completely match the skin fill, but then. Wow. Natural. It's a little darkening over here too. Alright, I think that's that's good enough for now. I think I'm gonna call it a night on this. And uh I hope that helps out. I hope um uh, you got some good tips. That should be enough to get you guys going. And like I said, if you wanna get this service, hit me up and uh let me know. I hope that helps you guys out. Uh, if you like this video, give it a big thumbs up. Leave uh, your comments in the box below. Maybe you want some more details about a specific topic. Uh, let me know. And uh, we'll mess with it on the next one. I might keep this background. I, I do like the gray. Or I might just add something completely different. You never know. You'll have to be following on uh, Insta. I'm going to save this and uh, render this video. Put it up to YouTube. And uh, we'll see you on the next